A Dutch website called Let's Go Digital has leaked a patent application that Sony made for a new controller and it looks unexpected to say the least. On the outside it's got a screen, a d-pad, the four PlayStation buttons you know and love, as well as two bumpers. Apparently on the inside there's a gyroscope and a tri-axle acceleration sensor. Maybe more importantly or more horrifying is the fact that it also might have a heart rate sensor and a fingerprint sensor. Why does the controller need this stuff other than to collect some very personal data? A lot of people are saying that this controller looks like a Nintendo Switch, but honestly it looks more like a Game Boy Micro. Don't remember these little things? The Game Boy Micro was the final Game Boy. It came out in 2005 and it's pretty much just just a smaller, sleeker version of the Game Boy Advance. Why is Sony biting the design of a forgotten version of the Game Boy? Well, they might not be. Some people are speculating that Sony is just trying to mislead all the Dutch internet sleuths by registering red herring patents. So this could just be a joke, but they could also be completely serious. Maybe Sony wants to drag us on a walk down memory lane. Nostalgia does sell, after all. The Dutch have also made a mock-up of what they think is a more realistic version of the DualShock 5. It looks pretty much like the DS4, but wider and flatter, with a honkin' big screen in the middle. And unless Sony invents a new type of battery, this thing will probably be plugged in more often than not. When the PS4 and the Xbox One came out back in 2013, no one was blown away. The generational jump wasn't what we thought it would be. But then three years later, Sony released the PlayStation 4 Pro, which had the specs everyone was expecting from the base model PS4. Needless to say, buying two versions of the same console isn't anyone's idea of a good deal. So what's gonna happen with the PS5? Well, here's what the people at PlayStation have to say about it. Indeed, in the past, the cycle for a new platform was seven to 10 years. But in view of the very rapid development and evolution of technology, it's really a six to seven year platform cycle. Then we cannot fully catch up with the rapid development of the technology, therefore our thinking is that as far as a platform is concerned for the PS5, it's a cycle of maybe six to seven years. But doing that, a platform life cycle, we should be able to change hardware itself and try to incorporate advancements in technology. That was the thinking behind it, and the test case of that thinking was the PS4 Pro that launched in the midway of the PS4 life cycle. So this sounds like it won't actually be a Pro version, or in Xbox's case, an X version. It seems more like they're gonna call it a day on the 5 after 6 years and go straight to the PlayStation 6. For a consumer, it's a lot more enticing to buy the shiny new console next generation instead of a slightly more powerful variation on the one you already have. But what about the competition? If Sony wants to monopolize the gaming industry, they're gonna have to show how much better their console is than the rest. The Nintendo Switch, although it's great, has a different audience. So we can cross that off the list right away. And the Google Stadia wasted no time proving itself to be irrelevant. That leaves the Xbox Project Scarlet. In their reveal trailer, which was like watching paint dry, they say that this generation will be a bigger leap than any generation we've done before. Does that mean that the color scheme will be, in keeping with the name, red instead of green? Microsoft is promising that its premium edition, which is called the Anaconda, proving that they are also fans of innuendo, will be about 10 times more powerful than the base model of the Xbox One. It will also somehow be cross-compatible with PC and Nintendo Switch. And then there's the fact that Microsoft and Sony will be working together. Although the nuts and bolts of the arrangement are vague at this point, there are two main points worth mentioning. One is the fact that the two companies will be collaborating on AI. The other, more important point, is that the two tech giants will be pooling their resources to build cloud infrastructure. The collaboration is confusing for fanboys of both consoles, but reps from both Xbox and PlayStation have point-blank denied that they'll merge the consoles into one. But who knows? Details are light from both camps, and it wouldn't be the first time that big companies have gone back on their word. This is the mark of a true market leader. The popular maxim is, skate to where the puck is going, not where it is. It's a way of saying that to ensure long-term market dominance, you need to keep moving and not afford to get complacent or take your foot off the pedal. Sony, with their moves this generation, of which their response to the cross-platform play controversy is just the latest one, have demonstrated a capacity of doing just that. They have demonstrated, once again, why they are a true market leader.